Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to the Financial Investor channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be doing our weekly recap for March 4th through the 8th, 2019. We're officially in the first week here, or well, second week of March. Last week we're going to go over the changes here for last week and then jump into this week's four main indexes, stock futures. Take a look at some of the stocks here that moved most in the after hours. The entire S&P 500 performance for the week. What stocks moved up? What stocks moved down? I saw Facebook moving positive this week, whereas basic materials and oil were down pretty good this week. We're going to look at financials, home builders, the dollar, oil, silver, gold, bonds, and then take a look at mortgage rates. I like to do these weekly recaps just to kind of have historical reference built up week after week and just have these very visual images where you can take a look at a playlist and see, okay, we've had eight weeks of nothing but green movement. Are we expecting some sort of a pullback? Yes. Is it, you know, is it warranted? Yeah, of course. You know, we've had 14% run up just within the last two months. A little bit of a pullback here of 2%. Is it bad? No, not at all. So let's go ahead and get into it. If you are brand new to the channel, hit that subscribe button below. I appreciate all your guys' subscriptions. If you do enjoy the video, find it helpful with the thumbs up. And if you have any comments, questions, want to drop some information that took place this week that I don't cover, drop it in the comment section below. I haven't really tracked a lot this week. It was pretty mild. You know, I expected the markets to kind of simmer off. So let's go ahead and get into it. So S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and then my portfolio were up positive last week, up 0.39 for the S&P, 0.9 for the NASDAQ, and 0.31 for my portfolio. The Dow basically stayed flat, going down 0.02%, but basically flat on the week. I believe point for point, they basically ended up where they had been. So let's go ahead and jump over to the S&P. So every single day this week, the S&P, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the Russell 2000 were negative after negative. The S&P here, I believe it actually pulled back the least out of all the main indexes here, down 2.16%. Year-to-date up 9.42. Here we have the Dow Jones here in third place, down 2.21% for the week. Year-to-date still in what was fourth place, I believe, here. Dow Jones up 9.10%. The NASDAQ here in second place. This pulled back here the second most. It was down 2.46% down uh, positive still 11.65% this week. And our leader here for the pullback here is the five-day change, the Russell 2000. Some of the economic news this has been coming out and been sort of negative. I mean, we can't go up week after, you know, month after month, just continuing adding jobs and such. So some sort of a pullback because of just, we can't continue that sort of growth. It's pretty normal. So here, five-day change down 4.26%. Still in the lead year today, up 12.85%. Stock futures are currently positive. I saw a lot of positive numbers, lots of positive stocks here in the after hours to take a look at here. So I do expect either to stay about flat for next week or stay positive here. I believe Monday is going to be positive today. Here we can see some of the most active stocks in the after hours here. Pfizer up 0.24. Eli Lilly down 0.47. Oracle up. This is not showing really up any sort of percentage here. General Electric, General Motors up 0.75. Oh, 0.53. eBay staying flat. AT&T up 0.07. Microsoft here and a few others. So a lot of positive movement there in the after hours as far as percentage changes. Now the S&P 500, this is a one day performance. So you can see here that Friday, we were basically flat down 0.21%, down 0.09, down 0.18% there in the NASDAQ. So basically about a 50-50 mix here between positive and negative. You can see Costco here doing some of their earnings. They jumped up some 5%. I know I got a notification from the Robinhood app here that Costco was up 5% after releasing their earnings. So good job for Costco. I checked and I didn't own that one. I knew I owned it in the past. But um, MU here, Micron Technology is also up about 2% here for the day. Now, as far as a week performance go here, we can see Facebook this week bouncing higher and higher. This one came off their lows a little bit below 130, now at 169.60, so getting priced really well here. I don't see Facebook continuing to climb too much higher. I'm not sure. I, I think a lot of the investors that I've been talking to, they're expecting about a 175, and then that's sort of like another ceiling where you could see them kind of fall between 175 and 165 for a little bit of a sideways trend. But you can see the most of the market here 
you know, we already saw the main indexes, but you can see here why they were so negative this week. Basically, every single index, um, I'm sorry, every single sector here was basically red with materials here, oil and such, losing quite a bit here. So they got hit pretty hard, as well as financials. So financials here down for the week, 2.7%. Year to date, still up 9.03. We have the semiconductors. This is the NASDAQ and a lot of the tech stocks down 4.14%. Year to date still up 18.04. Home builders here down 1.4%. I wasn't tracking a lot of the information. I know, um, what's it called? Lowe's helped them out here. That's 4.36% of their portfolio. But outside of that, I don't track a whole lot of these single stocks out there for these you know, ones. Home builders still up 17.10% year to date after having a pretty bad performance in 2018. Oil. I thought oil actually did you know worse than it came out to here but the oil the United States oil fund ticker symbol USO actually positive this week 0.6% so very interesting there I thought that would have came out negative when the market pulls back you can expect the dollar to move higher so here last week we we're at 96 something 96 36 96 37 I believe is when we did our last video you can see here that the dollar index is now at 97 36 so that dollar is climbing higher for the week silver and gold and bonds all higher this week so silver up 1.48 percent I know it tumbled here recently just within the last month or so you can see here a big drop here as far as silver performance going down from 15 dollars down right below uh, 1420 14 I believe 10 was where it kind of bottomed out at Let's see if this shows us this just showing us 13 dollars and 11 cents for the 52 week low but I believe it bottomed out here just recently about 1410 gold also positive this week up 0.79 percent year to date up 1.31 basically just sort of hedging their the market there the uh, stock market and then bonds I've seen a lot of investors jumping into bonds I'm not interested in bonds I've and I think I mentioned that in another one of my videos where I just prefer to have my cash if I'm gonna have any sort of exposure to the bond market it's just not worth it when I take fees into uh, consideration and also that the this has market fluctuation to it and why you make it uh, you might get a yield of around two percent let's see what the if I go over to Google and take a look here at BND ETF it'll tell us the uh, I guess I just need to type in the stock here it'll show us the yield here so if you had ten thousand dollars you'd be yielding around a two point seven three percent now if you left it in there for you know ten thousand dollars that'd be two hundred and seventy three dollars of dividend that you would probably more than likely get paid out to you but during that time frame, you'd also lose a little bit due to the expense ratio. Now this, within the last year, you can see here, we've had a change of 0.76. So it may have worked out in your favor here just the last year, but it's, that's not always the case. And as far as just having it in a high yield savings account, making about 2.25, 2.35 without any sort of change, you know, risk to the equity, that's always a preferred thing. So that's just me. Let me know in the comment section, do you guys have a lot of bond exposure or do you prefer just to have cash sitting in a high yield savings account with very low risk to the downside and just that high yield bonds this week moving down. So interest rates and bonds moving down sl uh, slightly lower this week. We had the uh, 10 year here, 2.62. Last week it was 2.76. So rates are kind of coming down. The US, U.S. Treasury yields are moving down slightly here. Last week, the 30-year was 3.12. It is now 3.01. The five-year was 2.56, now 2.42%. And mortgage rates last week were sitting at 4.53%. So you can see here that mortgage rates just within the last week have dropped. So if you're looking to get a mortgage, if you're looking for a rate right now, you can get some really good rates here at 4.7%. I know when I was checking out my rates, I think I will be going through better mortgage on my next a refinance they actually offered some really good incentives uh, you know so interesting 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 i still got to refinance my duplex and that is basically it i didn't post a whole lot this week over on my facebook page i just wasn't monitoring the market this week i did do some buys here on monday i got paid out from pfizer four dollars and thirteen cents simon property group five dollars and fifty two cents i 
use that equity, you know, my equity of cash that I add $115.38 plus the $9.65 of dividends that were paid out to buy Avery Denison, CenturyLink, Coca-Cola, Altria, and Walmart. So I did add two new positions to the portfolio. I bought CenturyLink at $12.34 and I bought Coca-Cola at $45.51. So I thought those are two good buying opportunities that I wanted to take advantage here at that time. I'm not exactly sure where they are currently trading at. I do plan to add a little bit more into uh, CenturyLink here, possibly Coca-Cola as well here. We can see Coca-Cola at 44.84 comparison to I bought it here at 45.51. So that one's offering a better deal there than when I bought it. And then CenturyLink 12.34, it is now at 12.30. So basically about flat for the week. So I'll probably be adding a little bit more shares in these two as well here in the next upcoming week. I release a video if you guys are interested in knowing the difference between a sole proprietorship or a limited liability company. I made a whole video going, going over the differences between them, why you would go with, say, say a sole proprietorship if you didn't have very many assets, didn't care much for the liability protection, and why you would, if you didn't, you know, once you had assets, you wanted to have some sort of liability shield between you, the person, and your business entity, why you would go with an LLC and sort of other benefits of that as well and I released my article here over my website covering all the dividends that got paid out for February I believe it was around 67 70 dollars of dividends that got paid out here in February between all the portfolios and then my current dividend estimate for 2019 from the 1st of March is looking $578.17 but again this increases about $25 every single month as I continue to add new equity. So what we are in the fourth month. No, nope, we're the third month of the year. So we have about another 10 months. So 10 by, uh, it probably increased dividends by another $225 by the end of the year. So we'll be sitting around 700, $800 of dividends by the end of 2019. And then stock market changes. We already sort of covered this. S&P down 2.16. Dow Jones down 2.21. NASDAQ down 2.46. And then my portfolio this week dropped 1.46% this week. So a little bit of a hit there. And I believe Apple kind of helped keep us a little bit higher just because of Apple not coming down as hard on Friday. And that is pretty much it for the week. So that is all for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, again, hit that subscribe button below. I appreciate all your guys' subscriptions. If you did enjoy the video, find it helpful, hit the thumbs up. And if you have any comments, questions, want to share some information that I did not cover in today's video, drop it in the comment section below, as well as if you have any questions going over the stock market, personal finance, real estate. I always appreciate all your guys' feedback. I like chatting with you guys. So if you guys ever want to go over to Facebook, message me directly, say hello. I know a lot of I have, you know, a lot of individuals reach out to me and say hello via email and messenger. So it's just nice to interact with other investors. So that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.